Most dice games are based entirely on luck. Snakes and Ladders is a perfect example. Excuse me, are you calling me basic? Uh, not really. I mean, you're great if people are learning how to count. But if you really want to think and work with the four operations, mathematical Snakes and Ladders can be played on any Snakes and Ladders board. Thank goodness the board you've made is offensive. To my eyes. Oh, hang on a second. I know your only job is to bring people down, but I worked hard on this. Mathematical snakes and ladders is played similar to traditional snakes and ladders. You roll a dice and then you apply that number with one of the four operations based on the square you're currently on. So, for example, if we just rolled a five here, you could multiply by five to bring this player up to 40, you could subtract five to bring them back to three. You could add 5 to bring yourself up to 13. The one thing that you couldn't do is divide by 5 because this wouldn't result in a whole number. Interesting. Whenever a player rolls a dice, they must apply that number with an operation to the square that they're currently on. Yes, let's put a player on 97 and make them roll a 1. Well, remember... You don't have to just add. So this player, instead of adding one, they could multiply or divide by one, and that would leave them on the square 97, or they could subtract one to take them back to 96. I see. Let's get them to roll a five then. Yeah, so if this player did roll a five, they couldn't add because that would take them past 100. They couldn't multiply for the same reason. They can't divide because the result won't be a whole number. The only option they have is to subtract 5, which takes them here. Tasty. And down to 70. If you want to make the game even more interesting, you can add some algebraic thinking into the mix by causing players who get landed on by an opponent to go all the way back to the start. That seems a bit harsh, even for a snake. It might seem harsh, but in this version, I think from any position on the board, you can win in four rolls or less. Sounds like a good extension task. It is, and there are so many interesting questions that come out of this game. Like, when would you ever use division? When could it ever be advantageous? Or, what sort of squares are really risky, where you risk other players landing on you? This game enables students to apply their knowledge of multiplication strategies to solve novel problems like 17 times 4 or 3 times 29. It also gives students a chance to think algebraically as they try to avoid opponents landing on them. And then finally, it gives them the opportunity to think about number properties and how they can use prime numbers, multiples and factors to their advantage. To counter some of the powerful strategies you'll discover when playing, I've created this specially made game board with carefully placed snakes and ladders to ensure your game doesn't end in a heartbeat. You can download this amazing piece of artwork free at thinksquare.com.au slash snakes and ladders. You can also purchase a beautifully illustrated version wow. which comes with extension questions and activities via the same link. If you'd like to learn more about how to have intentional fun in your maths classroom, I run hands-on professional learning workshops both in person and online. Contact andrew at thinksquare.com.au for more info. See you later. See ya.